even though Salida was dismissive about Vasily Lomachenko wanting to fight him again, I think Lomachenko does want to fight him again. Mm-hmm. Um, and if Lomachenko wins the fight that we're going to preview shortly, um, that seems like a fight he could take because even though he might very well lose it, and the nature of Lomachenko is that he's not going to take a, he's unlikely to take a brutal battering. He might, this time Lomachenko may have figured him out and might very well outbox him as he did down the stretch in their first fight. Um, but if you're going to take an, a fight before having a rematch with a guy like Vargas, something like Lomachenko, where you may very well lose it, but you did beat him the last time, you get some decent money for it, and you know, you're know you probably not going to be knocked down six times or, or deal with the kind of physical battering that you had uh, against Vargas. So you know maybe Salido might want to look at a Lomachenko rematch if Lomachenko comes to the Rocky Martinez fight, and we'll talk about that. All right. Well, uh, we are going back to back with Boxing After Darks, as we've talked about previously. Let's look ahead now uh, to the fight we have coming up next week. And we've already talked about it. It is Vasily Lomachenko uh, stepping up to 130 pounds against Roman Rocky Martinez. Uh, And we ask ourselves, as always, what is at stake in this upcoming fight? And... But Lomachenko is kind of an interesting thing. Um, you don't often look at a fighter with six pro fights and say that he's had a lull. He's hit a lull and he needs to get his momentum going somehow. But at five and one, Lomachenko is on a strange three fight moving sideways streak. Uh, he recovered from the aforementioned loss to Orlando Salido, in which he was, had found his groove in the second half of the fight, but was out-hustled and out-experienced and out-punched in the testicles by <laughs> by Salido in the first part. You know, really getting a sense of what real professional boxing was about. That happened in his second pro fight. Then after that, he went out and looked exceptional out-boxing Gary Russell Jr. Uh, two years ago. Uh, pretty much two years ago. Almost of the week. June 21st, 2014. Since then, he has dominated John Latarn Prepno, Gamalia Rodriguez, and Romulo Kusica in fights and that really have not lingered in the memory or really impressed. I was ringside for all of them, and I barely remember any of them. Um, and they didn't challenge him in the least. Uh, at least against Rocky Martinez, he's facing an opponent again for the first time since Russell that many, most fans would have heard of and most fans, well, many fans would have seen fighting. Uh, he's taking on an additional minor challenge. He's moving up in weight from 126 to 130, as we've talked about. Um, it's not a super fight, but it's at least a chance for Lamachenko to regain a little bit of momentum, to gain a win against at least a name opponent, against a measuring stick. A, you know, Martinez, for example, as we talked about before in his last two fights, and against Salido. So this gives us a chance to see how Lamachenko does against Martinez uh, relative to the likes of Orlando Salido. And it does potentially set himself up for big fights. Uh, at 130, if he decides to say that, he said he could go back to 126 if he wants to, and he's going to you know, see what his options are. But it could fight as we talked about, a rematch with Salido. He could fight the remade Francisco Vargas. <laughs> or, or Nicholas Walters. That fight is still circling out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and putting on a good performance at Madison Square Garden in your first East Coast fight certainly never hurt. So here he is in his seventh pro fight looking to, uh, yeah, really just kind of reignite himself a little bit for all the skill he has. Um, no one doubts what an incredibly skilled and talented fighter he is, but he, he definitely needs that something. Yeah. What I'm curious to see is whether the, the sense of apathy from fight fans over his last couple of fights and, and whether that has kind of uh, resonated with him at all, uh, combined with the Garden crowd, whether that all will inspire Lomachenko to fight any more passionately. He's such a stoic individual and he fights yeah. in such a controlled manner. I don't know if he's the sort of fighter who can inject a little emotion into his approach. I hope he can. Um, and I suspect Martinez might be the right style fighter to bring it out of him to, to push the pace and convince Lomachenko to gun for the knockout. Uh, this isn't a case where I'd say he needs a knockout or he needs to look great. But as you said, he, he's at a point in his career where he could sure use a, a wow performance. Yeah. Uh, as for 
uh, Roman Rocky Martinez and what's at stake for him. He's an underdog here. The The respect for Lomachenko's skills is so high that few are giving Martinez any chance at all in this fight. So if he can pull it off and beat Lomachenko, it will completely change the way we think of him and the way he's remembered when his career is complete. As of now, Rocky Martinez is a, a good veteran who's held belts, made good action fights, and generally come away with losses or draws more often than wins when stepping up to the highest levels. He's uh, something akin to a a Wilfredo Rivera or a Javier Castillejo or a Famoso Hernandez, that level of titleist who you sort of remember the name after he's done, but he didn't necessarily leave an indelible impression. And maybe even comparing him to those guys is, is being a tad generous. But if he beats Vasil Lomachenko, regarded by some as the most skilled boxer in the game today, then Martinez gets a complete reassessment. A win like that, one win like that, can keep him in line for paydays for another five years. It gives him a legacy, uh, a fight for people to talk about a decade or more after he's retired. If he loses at the Garden on Saturday night, no big deal. Nothing changes. But if he pulls off the long shot win, then... If I may play off his nickname, he goes from being a Rocky Juarez to a Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's strange with a guy like Lamachenko who is so good uh, as, as far as we believe. I mean, certainly throughout his amateur and you know his, his early professional career, appears to be so incredibly talented, yet still. You know, he's only six fights into into his career, and he obviously still doesn't have any kind of the broader cultural recognition that um, you know some more established fighters who had less, who have less skill than him uh, might have. And it's, in a way, on the level of frankly, what a shock it would be. It's not quite, but almost Douglas Tyson esque if Martinez were to beat Lomachenko, mm-hmm. in that Martinez is a like you said, a pretty decent fighter at a B level kind of uh, kind of level, um, whereas Lomachenko appears to be just completely on a whole other realm. It would be that kind of a victory without any kind of the cultural resonance that that, that <laughs> Douglas Tyson had, of course. Right. Um, yeah, it would absolutely vault him into having the opportunity. We talked last week. If Francisco Vargas beats Orlando Salido. Uh, you know, does he become the man at 130 pounds? Uh, if Martinez beats Lomachenko, particularly given that officially he hasn't lost to Salido, mm-hmm. uh, he suddenly becomes the man at 130 pounds. He gets to make his case. Uh, he gets to, if Salido wants to have a, a rubber match with him, then he gets to dictate the terms of that. Uh, he has, he's the guy with options for a Lomachenko rematch or a third fight with Salido or a fight with Vargas when Vargas is healed, all of these kind of things. And that, for a guy like Rocky Martinez, would be a very sudden and unusual turn of events. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point about how he can uh, become the man uh, at the top of the division or at least have a case. Um, but uh, it is a long shot. Uh, let's explore whether the numbers are stacked against him uh, in the way that sort of just the, the general public's view of this fight is that things are stacked against him. Let's do a quick stat chat here. And there are some interesting offensive stats uh, that were shared with us by our friends at CompuBox, including some staggering numbers put up by Lomachenko against his last few overmatched opponents. But the stats that are perhaps most telling for this matchup are of the defensive variety. The average junior lightweight lands 17.7 punches per round. In his CompuBox tracked fights, Lomachenko has held opponents to only 8.2 punches landed per round, less than half the weight class average. On the other hand, Martinez has allowed his last seven opponents to land 35.8% of their power punches. That's not significantly worse than average, but it's a hair worse than average. So what we have here is the numbers suggesting we have an elite defensive fighter against an average at best defensive fighter especially when you factor in Lomachenko's punching accuracy. Is there any way that the landed punches stats in this fight don't end up terribly one-sided? Yeah, I mean, it, this, this gets to 
um, I think under, underlines the scale of the, the size of the mountain that, that Martinez is going to have to climb here. Mm. And the reason, if you're somebody who's listening who hasn't actually had an opportunity to see Lomachenko fight and you're wondering, you know, how is it that he is able to limit uh, his opponents to uh, landing such a low percentage of fights, of punches, you watch Lomachenko and what makes him so effective is that if you're his opponent, you never know where the hell he's going to go to next. He has this incredible ability to fire off some punches, pivot, be in a completely different spot while immediately being ready to punch again. And he'll punch you and then move back to a completely different area. You're generally throwing punches at the place where Lomachenko most recently was and suddenly isn't and is hitting you from a different place. And that's an extremely difficult opponent to face, especially if, like Martinez, you are at your best and look your most impressive and are most used to being facing guys who are going to be there in front of you. Right. Um, Lamachenko is an entirely different challenge. Um, that's part of the reason that this, that style of fighting is part of the reason why he's not necessarily the most gutturally, emotionally uh, I- exciting fighter. Um, he doesn't score very many spectacular knockouts, but intellectually, he's a fabulous fighter to watch because you realize just w- how difficult it is that he is doing and how well he is executing it. And given Lomachenko's ability to pop up all over the place and put himself in a position to land punches while making it very difficult to even find him, uh, it is going to be very, very hard for Martinez to overcome these kind of lopsided punch stats, I think. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to our predictions then, where we're eschewing the usual three-category breakdown here, in part because it's already a lengthy podcast. We've uh, had a lot of other business to attend to, uh, and in part because there just isn't a lot of mystery as to <laughs> whom either of us are going to pick in our va- various categories. Lomachenko has almost every conceivable edge and as solid solid a fighter as martinez is i don't really see any way he can win he might be able to win a round or two or even three through sheer volume of attack but he doesn't have the same suffocating pressure style that salito used along with not making making weight and punching below the belt plenty uh to ever so narrowly upset lomachenko two years ago I expect Lomachenko to shine on Saturday night at the Garden. I expect Martinez to be made to order for him. I believe Lomachenko will become the second man to stop Martinez in about nine or ten rounds. I uh, also think that Lomachenko will win comfortably. I'm back and forth a little bit over whether he'll pull off the stoppage. I can completely see him doing that. And the way that he does score his stoppages when he does is just uh, essentially overwhelming his opponents in that after a while, they just can't catch up to him. And he's able to pop up and land punches at will from all kinds of different angles and all kinds of different positions. And it is entirely possible. Um, But I suspect that Martinez is enough veteran guile and has been in enough tough battles that he's just about gonna he's gonna hang in there uh lomachenko by a very wide points decision for me okay and we'll see if you adjust your pick at all later in the week once you get a good look at everybody's scar <laughs> exactly. tissue exactly start tend to sending you texts that cover every conceivable <laughs> place right whatever happens we'll go, oh well look 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 that's the proof. 